Hey, what's up everybody? I'm gonna start working on something new today. Uh, I have a roof box that needs to have some more clear coat and fix some scratches and stuff like paint <coughs> losing its grip because the previous owner had put some tape, I think, some sort of rubber material and overpainted it. And I think that is because of the friction with the mount points. I'll probably put something else there after I've repainted everything. Because it's still all these flakes falling off. So I need to address that before more of it starts uh, falling off everywhere on the little roof box. So basically I'm just going to go with some uh, clear coats. And I have some extra spray paint from my GT4, which has the same color. So that should uh, fix all the small scratches and stuff. And uh, that's basically it. I'm just going to update it a bit, make it look better. More clear coat for protection for all those scratches and dings and everything when you pack and you're uninstalling the roof box before winter. Yeah, stuff like that. So we'll see how that goes. It's in pretty good shape as it is, but still, some minor fixes like these. And we'll see how it turns out. Let's start. All right, and one of those things we're gonna do on this roof box is to make these take more friction when they're mounted on the car and uh, it just occurred to me that PlastiDip has a lot of other good areas to be used on and uh, I don't think many people know these pla these facts about PlastiDip that it's uh, yeah, it was developed actually for industrial vehicles to withstand some rough weather conditions or uh, uh, rough and gravel, sand, stuff like that. And they painted a lot of industrial vehicles on those parts, which is supposed to withstand as much punishment as possible. So it's not just for having a, a fast uh, tin foil or foil fo foliage mod for a car uh, and changing colors. It's actually used for a practical reason as well because it can really stand a lot of punishment. And, um, well, on the GT4, for instance, it has a lot of these parts, which is banged up on a re regular basis, like the wing. So as of now, it's starting to lose some grip here because it always hits the, the garage door when it's open. And, uh, the bonnet is still in pretty good shape. This is like several years ago before I even painted this. So it can really sustain the test of time. So hopefully this will work as well when sitting on the rails. We'll just have to see. So there we go. The plastic dip is where it should be. Hopefully, staying on and uh, taking all that punishment from the rails instead of the actual color and coating. So, um, I had some problems with the color because it. It went empty, so uh, I had to uh, use one of my uh, uh, brushes with that extra paint you get with the car. Basically, to just uh, fix 
minor injuries on the on the paint when stuff falls off or uh, hit, uh, you get hit by a stone or whatever. So that doesn't look so fancy as you can see, but at least I'm covering all the dings and scratches and everything so the paint doesn't fall off. The most important thing is the clear coat. I'm gonna cover the whole bottom part off with at least three layers of it just going on and on. Uh, so I'm, I'm satisfied with the bottom part. It's not supposed to be show car spec for any reason because it's just supposed to take <coughs> weather and wind and the gravel and sand and all those things as much as possible on, underneath. So we're gonna flip this over the next time I'm here when it's dried off and we're gonna make better work of top part to make it look as good as possible. So uh, that's that for this part. <coughs> okay, so I'm back and I'm gonna check how everything has dried up. It feels pretty good. I did some overspraying with the clear coat and that was planned because all the rivets and sharp edges needs to get stuck there. Uh, it seems like it, but it's pretty stiff and everything. So, all in all, pretty good job for the underneath part of the root box. Uh, so it is even, mm -hmm. even the badly painted scratches, which is not even going to show anyway. Uh, so now it's time to flip it over and do a better job on top. All right, so now it's cleaned, and as you can see, it's in pretty good shape, all in all. I mean, it has its, still its color on and everything. Uh, there's a bunch of scratches, which is very common for a roof box, for um, installing and dismounting all the time, and also hitting it with the bags or, well, stuff that happens in nature. For instance, we have a lot of pine trees here in Sweden because Sweden and um, we get a lot of sap also that uh, can uh, drip down from the trees when you have your car parked underneath them and they are the natural glue basically so I had to scratch it off with a with a tool at some parts I don't know if you can there's one of them, for instance, and it leaves marks, of course, because it's, it's so sticky and it's like super glue, and you really need to remove them uh, forcefully most of the time because the greaser and stuff like that doesn't really do the trick. And how I cleaned this whole roof box step by step on all these parts, I'm gonna repaint with clear coats is some CRC wipes, which are good for everything. I've, addressed this before in different videos and uh, basically just go through with may maybe two uh, wipes they're pretty big and they're I mean very wet as well and degrees at the same time and be sure to uh, wipe everything off with a clean uh, paper towel uh, a bunch of times un until you see that the paper towels are actually white and not leave any marks of like dust and everything and the CRC compound which is inside because if you leave too much compound on that area you're supposed to be repainting the paint won't stick so uh, but in all in general just do that step by step as I told you and uh, it's gonna be fine because it degreases as I said and really does the trick for removing dust and everything in the pores of the paint so now that everything is finished I'm gonna apply clear coat and stay here for maybe one hour or so and just let it dry as much as possible and I'm gonna install it on the car actually and let it keep drying in the sun. Some stuff that needs to be addressed even when it looks this good as it does you can see that uh, lock mounts and everything are starting to uh, actually show some wear and tear when it comes to rust uh, there are some 
chemical reactions happening here. Probably because of all the salts and everything we have in Sweden during the winter. Because that's what we do over on our roads. And I'm just going to clear coat them as well, because it's actually a good rust preventer. Uh, also, I discovered that it actually has some cracks going on here. Let's see if I can you know, barely see them, it's like hairline fractures. But that implies that this second paintwork from the previous owner is. Uh, isn't uh, sustaining the test of time when it comes to heat and uh, general punishment of weather. So, but I'm not gonna address that because other than just putting on clear coat because it's it's gonna hide it. And I think if it feels even, I can feel just a little one here, but all in all, it's pretty smooth. I don't feel any warp and it doesn't show anything. So just going with the clear coat, a couple of layers to pr pr protect it as much as possible. And all the brackets and mounts and everything also needs to get clear coated so it doesn't start to rust or there are some metal parts and aluminium parts, it's hard to tell. But it's a good practice to uh, when you're updating your roof box to just everything getting clear coated and protected so it can survive a couple of more years before a complete restoration. And you may ask yourself, will the clear coat cover st steps and scratches like these? And yeah, they will, because these are clear coat scratches. It's uh, sometimes hard to see which is which, but for instance, this one could be in the paint. But all in all, it's usually not the case. It's usually just a clear coat being scratched and you just need to apply more clear coat and they will totally disappear and you will see the color again. So uh, it's usually pretty easy. So going through the clear coat, a couple of layers. And there we go, here is the results. It's so-so when it comes to the glossy finish, but at least a lot of scratches disappeared. Some are still here, because they were deeper than I thought, but a lot of them also disappeared. <clears throat> and you can see all in all, it's a pretty good cover for the clear coats. I had to put some paint here, you can see it's pretty Be one darker than the other one. It doesn't matter, I'm still gonna get a, another paint can to make that more even later on. And we have some fogginess in the paint. It's probably because of the really hot weather. It's a bit humid in the air, but that doesn't matter. It's gonna buff out with some Meguiar's compound later on. But the most important thing is that it's covered and a lot more protected than before and when you're standing in front of the car it looks good so now onward to the mounting on the Subaru and I always start with a blanket on top of the roof in case of you messing up when you're lifting by yourself so that's also a good pro tip from an amateur We'll see how that goes. 